This morning's speaker is no stranger to us because he's a frequent contributor to our monthly small business e-news. Rick Dacry is one of those rare individuals who can take difficult employee issues, sort through their complexities, and find practical solutions for employers that make sense. Dacry brings more than 25 years of experience in senior management, organizational development, and human resources, all in one package. Rick has consulted to a wide variety of businesses, large and small, always bringing to the table practical approach, sound advice, and a sense of humor. Rick's consulting firm, Dacry & Associates, LLC, helps organizations improve individual and organizational performance. Rick is a recognized national speaker and has authored over 100 articles for a number of business publications. Would you please welcome Rick Dacry. Let me ask you if I may, uh, we want to talk a little bit about succession planning this morning. So let me ask you this if I can. If when you go back to work today, you find that that key employee of yours, you know, the one that you depend on, the one who makes your organization run, is no longer there, what would you do? What's your plan? Do you have a replacement ready? Let me ask you this, particularly to you business owners. What would happen to your organization if suddenly you weren't there? Would your organization be able to continue? Or would it fail? This morning we want to talk about what your plan may be in the event that something like this happens. Now we know what happens in the big corporations. When Jack Welch retired from General Electric, there were three people in line to step in. What you might not know is a few years ago in McDonald's Corporation, the president of and CEO of that organization suddenly died. But there was a replacement literally a heartbeat away and within hours somebody stepped in. What you probably don't know about that is a month later he was stricken and he was replaced within hours. But the organization was able to continue in McDonald's as we know today, even in spite of this economy, is doing extremely well. But those are big Fortune 500 companies. That's not like us. So what do we do? Well, there is one organization, a large one, one that is near and dear to my heart and I think probably your heart, an organization that really takes pride in developing its talent internally always focusing on that, always preparing for what might happen. Back in September, in the first quarter of the first game of the NFL, Tom Brady was suddenly hit, his knee goes out, he's gone for the season, some guy by the name of Castle comes running out on the field, and he leads the team to an 11-5 record. That's succession planning. That's developing talent. But again, you don't have a major franchise either. You don't have the sign of wealth and depth that a Fortune 500 company has or an NFL franchise. So what are you gonna do? I was most recently working with a small builder on the coast. They build these incredible homes. You know, the multi-million dollar homes. One million, two million dollar homes. Beautiful. And I got to meet with the owner of the organization. It's a family-run business, about 30 people. He's been in business for about 40 years. He and his wife started it from scratch, and they've grown this incredible home, uh, business of building homes. They're not being impacted by this downturn. The folks who buy these million-dollar homes pay cash. So it's not a fact of their business, at least not so much. He came in and he met with me with his daughter who was new to the business. And he talked to me about how he formed this business, he and his wife, they've grown this, and the plan in place was that the son was going to take over the business. Succession planning was in place. And so from a very young age, his son entered the business. He entered it when he could just barely figure out which end of a hammer to lift. Well, he turned out to be an extraordinary carpenter. Um, he is a great builder of houses. So this plan seems to be flowing well. 
So in the course of our conversation, the father, the owner, and his daughter, who was brand new to the business, the fourth member of the family, he began to cry. Now, I got to tell you, people don't come into my office very frequently and start crying. The nature of my business doesn't bring too many tears in place. But he did. You see, his concern was the legacy of his business. His son, a great carpenter, was not a business owner, was not a businessman. And what was he going to do with his business? We all know family-run businesses frequently fail in the second generation. And that was his concern, his legacy, everything he had in front of him as he prepares for those golden years of retirement. And he was concerned, can I turn over the business and what will happen to my business? Most organizations are not prepared for the continuation of the business. There was a recent uh, survey done by the Society of Human Resource Management, a number of the members in this room. They surveyed large and very small organizations. 75% of the executives who responded to the survey said the number one challenge facing their organization is succession planning, followed very closely by having a pipeline of talent within their organization to be able to step up and do the job. I recently conducted a survey, maybe some of you participated, of HR professionals and business owners in the Northeast. And what I found was only one third of the participants said they had any form of succession planning in place. So I then asked them, why don't you? Why don't you have a plan? And I got five responses, five answers. First one was, I'm dealing with the crisis that's in front of me. There's no sense of urgency about the future. And in this economy, how can you be thinking about the future when I'm trying to figure out to survive? My only warning to that is those people who do not prepare for the future often don't have one. The second reason was succession planning hits too close to home. I don't like the idea of thinking about somebody else stepping into my chair, taking over my job. It's too painful to think about, so maybe I just won't. The third one was, I just don't know. I don't know how to begin the process. So I won't develop a plan at all. I met with an with a executive on Tuesday. And she said to me, I'm really thinking I got to do something about the organization. I got to do something about what's going to happen in the organization. But very frankly, Rick, I don't even know what questions to be asking you. Well, she did the right thing. She knew she didn't know what questions to ask, but she knew she needed to address the issue. The fourth reason people said to me is they just don't have time to focus on people. I got to run my business. People is the last thing I'm concerned about. Well, I'm going to tell you. I've been in the business world a long time. We all produce great products. We all provide great service. But the thing that often differentiates the good businesses from the businesses who just get by are the talent they have within their organization, their people. So those who don't focus on their people aren't successful. The last reason, people said, of why they don't have any kind of plan in place can best be described by a conversation I had with an executive. <coughs> who basically said to me, you know, Rick, I don't really care. I'll be gone. It won't be my problem. <laughs> it's a little jaded. But what can you say? He was honest. I had to give him credit for that. Uh, but it doesn't say much about the organization and where that organization is going to be down the road. The continuity of your business, the successful continuity of your business, really requires that you have a plan. There are three realities that we run and we see every kind in an organization. First of all, people quit their jobs. Secondly, people retire. And third, people die. What are you going to do? What's your plan in place? So what is this succession planning all about? It's simply this. Well, it's not, let's, we, we, I like to keep things uncomplicated. It's just a simple process of identifying people within your organization and making sure that they are developed. The talent of these individuals are developed 
so that you can ensure that key positions in your organization can be filled with internal candidates. Your people, you want them ready. And in this economy, your people better be ready. They better be versatile. They better be able to do a lot of different things. And if something should happen, you need to be ready. We're not talking about developing an organization or a plan where you bring in extra people. You don't have the luxury of having a backup quarterback sitting on the bench waiting for what might happen. Castle waited four years. You don't have that. It's a dynamic process, and it focuses on simply developing your talent, creating a talent pool of internal people. It also requires or includes making sure that you retain the knowledge that they have. I was talking to an individual who was saying, you know, when people leave, they take everything with them. Those people in manufacturing, if I said to you, I'm going to wheel out your machines, you'd have a heart attack. Every night, your people walk out the door. Have you done anything to capture their knowledge in case they don't return? Let me tell you a story about um, an organization I'm dealing with um, here in Maine. It's a utility. 50 employees. The general manager said to me, I'm planning on retiring in five to seven years. A plan. He made his, his plans known to the trustees, and I got to meet with the trustees and him, and he said, I think I'm leaving in five to seven years. Um, I'd like you to take an assessment of my current organization to see, is there anybody who could step in to this position? So he took a look at his key management group. We did an assessment of them. And what we found was the following. He had a well-run organization. Not one of the members of his key staff would be able to step in when he leaves. Actually, there was one, but he was going to be retiring earlier than him. So that was our <laughs> The second thing we found out, to our surprise, is none of them wanted the job. I'm not interested in becoming the general manager. Now, he had a great team in place there. Third thing we found out is of those general managers, none of their direct reports could step into their roles. So we had a well-run organization, and it is a well-run organization. And it would continue, and it will continue to run well as long as nobody quits, nobody <laughs> retires, and nobody dies we had to make some changes. In this case, there was no one internally to be able to step in in that general manager's position, and it forced us to go out and recruit someone who could become the assistant general manager, make sure his, he was developed, mentored, and coached, so that when the time comes for the general manager to be able to step down, someone's in place. We're at a critical juncture. We, 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 when we think about talent now, and we think about the numbers of layoffs that are occurring, we think there's a lot of people around. The reality of it is that's not the case. The baby boomers are retiring. Maybe a little later with their portfolios, but they will eventually be retiring. The flow of talent is going to be moving out your door, and it's going to be increasing. As executives and business owners, you've created something you want to continue, so you've got to be prepared for that. And having a plan is the best way of ensuring your legacy continues. It ensures the financial well-being of your organization. It's frankly doing the right thing for continuation of your business. And we all want our business to be in better hands and in better shape when we leave. So let me just quickly uh, tell you some of the steps you want to follow to begin this process today. First of all, it requires leadership at the top to be able to take a look at the organization to be able to develop such a plan. This is a CEO role. This is an executive director role. This is an owner role. It's not simply an HR function, though they should be involved if you have an HR department. The focus has got to be on your internal talent, your people, identifying them. Who are those key players? And make sure you take care of them. You develop their talents. Develop their talents for today. Develop their talents so they can help you tomorrow. Which requires you really kind of linking it to your business strategy as to what my organization is going to look like today, what's it going to look like tomorrow, because our businesses are going to change and evolve. 
it requires as part of that talent process a really a comprehensive performance management system. Now let me just take one second and talk about performance management systems. Performance management systems are not systems where we look back to find out what they did. A good performance management system says looking forward and what is the individual in front of me, that manager, that key person. What do I need to make sure that they are with me tomorrow and they can help me tomorrow? It's a development process. Start the process, start it slowly, but start. And where you can't or you need help, get professional assistance. But having good succession in place is critical to your organization. Your business will grow at the pace you grow your talent. Now there are additional steps, I, I've put, included an article in your packet there uh, that, you, that has additional steps on how to put in place a succession planning. Remember, your people are the things that separate you from your competition. They are the divider. So as we go out today, as we leave, and it's cold and it's rainy and there's snow on the ground, we can all take comfort in knowing that spring will come, summer will eventually be here, and then that crispness of fall and football weather will be with us. The word is, Brady's knee is gonna be okay. <laughs> For those who are worried though, Castle is on the bench. Thank you very much.